Hello everybody and welcome to the life of a board gamer. Another quirky review here with me today is Yurai. Welcome. And he's from Croatia and I'm very proud of that. And the game, and uh, he designed the game called Machina Arcana. You can see it right over here. So let's ask him some questions and see what's inside his mind. Let's start. No, I've never done that. Any it's kind of stickers or just... No. No fruit stickers. No, I actually maybe done some kind of uh, collection, but it might be illegal to talk about that. Oh, we don't want to do that, right? Yeah, because corpses are still, I think, a taboo. Oh, here. yes, yes, we don't want to talk about that. Exactly. But I have a huge sticker collection of fruits. Oh, yes, yes, cool. I do. <laughs> speed of the dark. Yeah, we know the speed of light, of course. Oh, yeah. Huh. What is the speed of the dark? Uh, the speed of the dark is something that you... It's like an unknown formula that okay. is somewhere in the back of your head, always ready to prance on you and Did deliver you to a chaotic world. So, in one way, it's even faster, because it's always there. Do you have a number by any chance, like... A number, four, infinity. Six, infinity. The speed of the dark is infinity, plus one. Yes. When you die, then there is no more fortune for you. No more Your destiny ends. Right. So no, so there is, it's your death, that's the final one. But what about afterlife? Maybe if you're a ghost and someone hmm. opens a fortune cookie for you, if you manage to contact them, of course. True, that makes sense. But then you're in a different realm and the destiny is calculated in a totally different manner. Yeah. It's a different math, we won't talk about it today. So the Machina Arcana is Machina story Arcana, driven. I'm yeah, sorry. it's some kind of a Latin, you know. Okay, yeah. It sounds much more ominous when you Machina. use the dead language. Yeah. It's a story driven game, so that means when you start the game, you use some of the scenarios and you go through it like a storybook. But it's not just the stories in the chapters, but the things that happen around you that have their own stories on their own are the good things or the bad things as well. And besides the story-driven elements, the game is also a tactical game. That means it's played on the board, and you will sometimes need to utilize the environment in order to stay alive. Because the monsters are very hard, and you will die if you try to confront them directly. Some of the things that you can do is maybe close the doors on them, maybe pull the lever and impale all the units in the trapped spaces, hit the exploding barrel, or use some of the other map spaces, like a chest, it will enable you to gain items. Items are steampunk, but not just in the way that they look, but how they feel and use. One example is that you can have a pneumatic hammer that you can upgrade with a rotovolver, which can then additionally be augmented with a precision scope. The game is for one to four players. There's no need for a dungeon master. The oh. game plays on its own. And the playing time can be, for example, for scenario one, four to six hours. Although you can limit and shorten the duration by removing some of the chapters, which means you can have a session with just one hour. We have had a Kickstarter that ended like a month ago, and now the late pledges are open. So late pledge for this great game. Don't miss out on it. Get it while you still can. Well, thank you so much for this awesome interview. Thanks. And see you guys.